हेलो एवरी वन गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल ऑफ यू टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अवर न्यू चैप्टर दैट इज मैप्स फ्रॉम जोग्राफी पोर्शन सो लेट्स प्रोसीड मैप्स वी हैव लर्न इन द प्रीवियस चैप्टर अबाउट द एडवांटेजेस ऑफ अ ग्लोब हाउ एवर ग्लोब हैज लिमिटेशन एज वेल अ ग्लोब can be useful when we want to study the earth as a whole but when we want to study only the part of earth as about our country states districts towns and villages it is of little help in such situation we use maps we find that maps are useful to us for various purposes one map shows a small area and a few facts another map may contain as many facts as a big book when many maps are put together we get an atlas atlases are of various sizes measurements drawn on different scales maps provide more information than a globe they are of different types some of them are described below physical map maps showing natural features of the earth such as mountain plateaus plains oceans rivers etc are called physical or relief map political map maps showing cities towns and villages and different countries and states of the world with their boundaries are called political map thematic map some map focus on specific information such as road map rainfall maps maps showing distribution of forest industries etc are known as thematic map now children we will discuss about sketch what is sketch a sketch is a drawing mainly based on memory and spot observation and not to scale sometimes a rough drawing is required of an area to tell where a particular place is located with respect to other places suppose you want to go to your friend's house but you don't know the way your friend will make a rough drawing to show the way to his or her house such a rough drawing is drawing without the scale and is called a sketch map in short we can say that a sketch is a rough drawing of a particular place or an area it is not drawn to scale it just gives us a general idea about the place for example its location landmarks etc plan a plan is a drawing of a small area on a large scale a large scale map gives lots of information but there are certain things which we may sometimes want to know sometime for example the length and breadth of a room which can't be shown in the map at that time we can refer drawings drawn to scale is called a plan components of map there are mainly three components of map first distance second direction and the third one is symbol distance maps are drawing which reduce the entire world or a part of it to fit on a sheet of paper or we can say maps are drawn to reduced scale but this reduction is done very carefully so that the distance between the places is real it can only be possible when a small distance on paper represents a large distance on ground therefore a scale is chosen for this purpose scale is the ratio between the actual distance on the ground and the distance shown on the map 
For example, the distance between your school and your home is 10 km. If you show this 10 km distance by 2 cm on a map, it means 1 cm is 5 km on the ground. The scale your drawing will be 1 cm is equal to 5 km. Thus, a scale is very important in any map. If you know the scale, you will be able to calculate the distance between any two places. When large areas like continent or countries are to be shown on a paper, then we use small scale. And when a small area like villages or towns is to be shown on paper, then use a large scale. Large scale maps give us more information than small scale map. Direction most maps contain an arrow marked with the letter M. There are four major directions, north, south, east and west. These directions are known as cardinal directions. In most of the maps, there is an arrow with the letter N on the top. It is on the right hand side of the map. The arrow points towards the north. Therefore, it is called the north line. It is a reference point which helps us to find out the other directions. Example, east, south and west. There are other four intermediate directions called the northeast, southeast, southwest and northwest. It is possible to locate any place on the earth accurately with the help of these intermediate directions. Now symbol. What are symbols? It is the third important component of a map. It is not possible to draw on a map the actual shape and size of different features such as buildings, roads, bridges, trees, railway lines or a well. So they are shown by certain letters sheets, colors, pictures and lines. These symbols give a lot of information in a limited space. With the use of these symbols, maps can be drawn easily and are simple to read, even if you don't know the language of an area and therefore cannot ask someone for directions. You can collect information from maps with the help of these symbols. Maps have a universal language that can be understood by all. There is an international agreement regarding the use of these symbols. These are called conventional symbols. So I hope children that you all gathered a lots of information about different aspects of map. That's all for today. Thank you so much.